Okay, a long time ago in a classroom far, far away, you learned add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. Well, these, the first one, of course, is super easy because it's already got a common what? Denominator. So you can just add them and you get three fifths. Now, the thing that amazes me, though, is that when we change, excuse me, some of you guys are talking back there. Don't do that. Pay attention. All right. Some of you guys, if you're not going to look up here, I am going to ask you to move to a different seat. All right. Good. Um, some of you guys, when you get to this and it becomes 2 over x plus 5 over x, will want to say that it would be 7 over 2x. Because you think, well, you're adding them and isn't x plus x 2x? But look it. 5 and 5, and the answer is in fifths, right? You don't add the bottom of the fraction, do you? You add the top of the fraction, don't you? All right. So when we do this, obviously, we're not going to go back to this easy. We're going to be doing them with variables. And when you do them with variables, don't please resist the urge to add these together. You don't. This would just be 7 over x. All right, this one. How do you get them to have a common denominator? Well, if I wanted to, I could multiply them together. 3 times 4 makes 12, and I can use 12. Is there ever a better one? Sometimes. But the easy way to just explain this is if you always multiply these guys together and make it 12, then you can just say times by 4 here, times by 4 here. Why am I even allowed to just go take a number? Like if I took the number 17 and I decided that I wanted to change how it looked, could I just multiply it by 5 or something? No, I couldn't, because it totally changes what the number is. You can only do that if it's an equation. If it's like 17 equals 2x, then I can do anything I want to both sides of an equation. But I can't just take a number like 17. It's an expression, an algebraic expression. And I can't just multiply it by 17. Well, why can I multiply this by 4? Because I'm multiplying it by 4 over 4. What's 4 over 4 equal to? And that's why you're allowed to do it. You can multiply anything you want by 1. Then you're just changing how it looks. It's still worth the same thing because you're timesing it by 1. And so this will end up being 8 on the top and on the bottom will be 12. And this one, to get the 4 to change into 12, so I times by 3. And if I times it by 3 there, i got to times by 3 here so that I'm multiplying by 3 over 3. That's why it's allowed. So this becomes 3 twelfths. Maybe you're understanding better why you do, did what you did back then. 8 plus the 3 makes 11 twelfths. Notice I did not add the denominators. I just kept them the same. All right, so 11 twelfths. Do you get how to do those? you remember how to do those? All right, so what's but multiply? Easy. Just multiply across. 2 times 1 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Done. 2 tenths. But you got to reduce it at the end which would be one-fifth. Now, is there any way we could have reduced it ahead of time? Yes, I could cancel this and this. Why can I cancel them? I want you to think it deeper than just, there's a two on top and bottom. Yes? Yeah, because two over two is really equal to one. See, if I brought this two to the front and I brought this two to the front of this side, I'd have two over two times one over five. I just rearranged the problem. And now, that big thing right there is just a 1. All right, so that's why I can cancel this off and get an answer of 1 fifth. All right, how about this one? Can I do any canceling on this one? Sure, I can. What goes into 9? So here's what I'd do. I'd rewrite the 9 as 3 times 3. Then I'd go cancel, cancel. No, but you do not have to cancel, but you have to reduce. So this way of canceling, you get the answer of 3 tenths right off the bat. If you want to do it without canceling, and you just want to go like this, that's 9 over 30. That's fine, but then you got to reduce it. I think it's easier to cancel than to have to reduce. All right, moving on. That's divide. We did add and subtract. Add and subtract are exactly like each other. You need common denominators. I do not know why the teacher who made this put Barney on here, but I know there was Urkel. Soon you're going to be seeing Jerry Seinfeld. I don't know. Um, what? The theme for today is name that old TV show. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. So I guess I gave that away. Barney. Okay. 
I gotta get these guys out of there. It's driving me crazy. Okay. So, dividing. Okay, so this dividing is harder than multiplying, but all we do is change it into a multiply. You know what to do? Tell me what to do. So I leave this alone, and I change it to a multiply by the reciprocal. Very good. And that becomes multiply by 2 over 1. Here's the easiest way, for me anyway, to describe this to you. If I had to take uh, 20 and divide it by 2, you guys know what that means, don't you? Dividing something by 2, dividing it in half. It's the same as 20 times a half. Does, does that one make sense to you? All right. So what did I do? I took this one and I flipped it. I changed it from a divide to a times. And I flipped it from a 2 to a 1 half. So it works. And it'll work very well when we're solving these. So now it becomes a multiply problem. And as long as you don't fall into that trap uh, of thinking you need a common denominator on these, you do not. On multiplies, you just have to multiply across the top and the bottom. Four fifths. You'll get the answers really easy. Okay, this one. On your paper, 7 11 times 2 thirds. Just write the answer. I know it's so easy that you don't need to write the problem down. Just write the answer down. All right. Over there in the red shirt. I don't like to say names on the video, so go ahead. All right. So it would be 21 over 22. Raise your hand if you've got the same thing as red shirt guy. Good. Moving on. On to this kind. Okay. Anybody name the TV show since we got the theme going here? I think it might be Strawberry Shortcake. All right. I'm not going to take your word for that one. Okay. So mixed numbers. A lot of people see mixed numbers, which are this kind, or improper numbers, which are this kind, as being, excuse me, listen, as being somehow bad because I think it has to do with this since it says improper fraction. If I had said, you know, your behavior today was improper, you would know I meant that that wasn't right. It wasn't good. So improper, though, implies that this is bad and that we shouldn't have it. But actually, in algebra, we really would rather have you have 8 sevenths than 1 and 1 seventh. It's true they're equal, but if you ever put 1 and 1 seventh sine of or sine squared theta or something like we're going to do next year, um, that, that would really not be good. You shouldn't be doing improper fractions, excuse me, not improper, um, mixed numbers next to functions. So you should really have something like 8 sevenths there. So bottom line is improper fractions are not improper. You can leave them that way and they're okay. But I do want you to know what this would be. This would be the exact same thing as 7 sevenths plus 1 seventh. If you break it down into an adding problem, it makes it pretty easy to see that that's 1 and 1 seventh. Do you get what I'm saying? All right. This one over here, to get 3 and a half to change into its improper, you go like this. 3 times the 2 makes 6, plus the 1 makes 7, and the answer is 7 halves. You get that? All right, I'd like you to do this one. Don't say it, but do it. And write the answer down on your paper and see if you remember that one correctly. Grab your pencil. I don't want to have to throw something at you to wake you up. Thank you. All right. With the pencil, writing it on the paper. All right. So this times this, 32 plus the 7, 39 eighths. Raise your hand if you had it right. Okay, good. Back to this one. If you had to break it down, we could... Break it down into 14 over 2 plus 1 over 2 would have made 15 over 2, right? And why did I do that? Because now this turns into what? 7 and a half. All right, so that's just some basics of fractions. Now, of course, it's going to get more and more and more complicated. Um, this kind is still dividing fractions. Do you get how that's a divide problem? So we really... Okay, it's full house. Thank you. Oh, I got to... 
I'm not good at these. Okay, I didn't watch all of these. These were like after I was already an adult, and so I wasn't watching these little kid shows. Okay, anyway, I'm changing this one from a divide. What's what's the easy kind? Times. Be a lot easier if I change that to a times by what? Four thirds. We've done this enough this year with through that algebra ninja stuff that this should be really easy. All right, but of course it's going to get harder. So what if it's A over BC? Fractions play nice with other fractions. By the way, who is, what is this one? I know this one. It's old enough that I know it. Golden girls. Golden girls. Very good. <laughs> okay. Anyway, this one becomes A over 1 over B over C. Why? Because fractions work better with other fractions. If you try to mix in whole numbers being multiplied by fractions, it just doesn't work as nice as if you change the 2 into a 2 over 1, for instance. Then they'll play nice together. All right, so I'm changing that to an A over 1. Now I can change the whole problem into A over 1 times, not B over C, C over B. Final answer, A, C over 1B, which is just B. Okay? All right, so if you're adding them, this makes, yep, that's pretty obvious one, Seinfeld. Um, if you're doing this problem, you hopefully remember that we multiplied the bottom and that we're going to have BD as our denominator. Please write this one down on your paper. Put the calculator down before you lose it. Write this down. All right. So, if BD is going to be the denominator, I somehow have to get a D on this thing. And if I put a D there, I'd have to put a D on the top. See, that's the whole multiply by one thing, remember? So, this one over here, I'd have to multiply by B over B. And then see what you get. And see if you make the common mistake that a lot of kids make. All right, DA plus CB, it's not multiplied, it's plus right there, all over, and here's where a lot of kids screw up, it's just DB. There's only one DB. Why? Because remember when you're adding fractions, the bottom doesn't get added. Only the top does. How many of you had that right? Raise your hand if you did. All right, it's more than half anyway. Okay. Same idea, except, uh, yes, meet George Jetson. Daughter Judy, Jane, his wife. I can't think of. Is this right? No. This is the Jetsons, and it is, I've got my names right on this one. I was a kid watching this one. His boy Elroy. His boy Elroy, very good. I can't, anybody think of the dog's name? Astro. Astro the dog. Very good. All right. We're out of there. Okay. Oh, moving on. If I'm going to get a common denominator up here and then change this from a divide into a multiply by flip it, I think you can do it. Give it a shot. Start with the top there where you have to find a common denominator. Yeah, I can get rid of the red marks here, but start with the top. See, some kids tried to start by multiplying everything by the thing on the bottom. Don't do that. Get the top done. Do this part. Once you're done with that part, then you can change it into multiplying by K over J. Uh, you can't. I'll explain it later. For right now, I'll show you in a minute. For right now, you just try it without canceling anything. There's a whole section on the worksheet called Can or Can't You Cancel? I thought it was a catchy name. Can or Can't You Cancel? <laughs> you know you want to say it. Can or Can't You Cancel? Yep. We'll do that tomorrow. All right. Did you multiply by K and K? Did you multiply by I and I? Did you say KH plus JI all over KJ? Good, because it was KI. 
And then, that's the top. Then the bottom here, I'm going to bring that up and turn it into a multiply by flip it, K over J. Now I can do a little bit of canceling, but you can't just like, oh, I see J's in a couple places, I'm going to cancel them. You have to be careful about where you can cancel and where you can't. If there's a multiply problem like this, and you want to cancel one thing on the top, and you go diagonal like this to one thing on the bottom, you can do that. that those K's can cancel. All right? But the J here can't cancel the other J. Because there's a J here, but there isn't one here. Here's the way to think of it. If I had had this problem, 2 plus 5 all over 2, do you think I could cancel the 2s? Do you get how this should be 7 over 2? Do you get if I cancel these 2s off, the answer will be 5 and not 7 over 2? Okay, so that you cannot cancel things like that. Whereas you could if this had been a 2 right here. Because then the answer should have been 4 over 2, which reduces to 2. But if I'm saying you can cancel it, does that mean they all disappear? They turn into 1s. So if I can cancel this, this will turn into 1 and a 1 and a 1. It's 1 plus 1 over 1 which is 2, so it works. See? So only if there's an add in the problem, you can only cancel something if there's one here and here. So since there's an add in this problem, I could only cancel this J if there was a J on both this part and that part. That's can or can't you cancel, and we'll do more of that tomorrow. Almost lunchtime, but not quite. Sorry. Moving on. Um... There's one more thing i got to cover because of what I'm assigning in the packet, and that is uh, these. If I said 2 over C equals 3 over 7, do you know how to cross multiply? Good. Now, so many kids think that any time they have two fractions near each other that they can cross multiply. If this had been 2 over C times 3 over 7... I know most of you know this, but so do you get how a lot of kids think that they should cross multiply? Because it looks just like this, but you don't cross multiply on this kind of a problem. You do cross multiply when there's an equals. So only cross multiply over the over an equals. So let's just do one like that. Let's write that one down. 2 over C equals 3 over 7. Cross multiply it out. Solve it for C. Get C alone. <clears throat> I think you're hiding the fact you don't have a pencil. You don't, do you? All right. You'll be last out. We'll chat about that. <laughs> All right. So this one should be 14 equals what? 3C. And then how do I get the C alone? Divide by 3. Final answer is 14 thirds. So that's cross-multiplying reminder. All right. Have a good lunch.